Building interoperability across systems in healthcare poses unique challenges, especially if they are siloed. This is where the Healthcare API helps accelerate the uploading, sending, analyzing, storing, and interfacing with other healthcare data via cloud-based applications. And so in this episode, we will talk about what is the Healthcare API and what are some best practices around using Fire. API stands for Application Programming Interface and is a kind of library of functions that passes information over the web. It defines the inputs and outputs available over HTTP. The Healthcare API specifically bundles multiple tools and processes that help application developers deliver compliance in a heavily regulated environment as well as store sensitive patient information in a more convenient and standard manner. And even though you enable it like you do with any other API in the Google Cloud Console, the Healthcare API contains specialized data storing modalities in order to support DICOM, HL7v2, and FHIR. DICOM means Digital Imaging and Communications in Medicine, and we will talk more about that in another episode. Next is HL7v2, which is an event messaging service that was created in 1989 for healthcare entities to communicate with each other, such as medical providers, labs, insurers, etc. Now, there are two common challenges, however. The first is that it's semi-structured data, and that is difficult to parse. And the second is that it uses a protocol that predates the Internet's HTTP standard. To overcome these, the Healthcare API can store the messages in its raw format or parse the messages for developers to more easily work with it. And one can overcome the protocol's web constraints by also using a free adapter in tandem with the Healthcare API. Doing this also then expands your ability to leverage additional cloud infrastructure tools, which can help process massive amounts of data to find insights or apply machine learning. Next, moving on to FHIR, which stands for Fast Healthcare Interoperability Resources. This is an API and data standard that came about as the industry has been working on improving the exchange of electronic health records by leveraging modern web-based technologies like OAuth, JSON, and HTML. The Healthcare API has the benefit of mapping data as a graph or a web of resources that are interconnected, and you can perform human queries over them. Let's take a quick look. On top of a robust set of API functionalities, the healthcare team has built a user interface to interact with Google Cloud's healthcare API. Here I am looking at the dataset view, a way for organizations to logically partition their resources. If I click in, I have the ability to create data stores right within the interface. Data stores can include consent, DICOM, HL7, and FHIR. When creating a Firestore, I can attach a cloud pub subtopic for triggering downstream workflows. This will essentially fire off when there are any changes made to the backend database. I can also attach a label for use cases like billing and choose which version of Fire I would like to utilize. Back in the dataset view, I have the ability to import, export to both Google Cloud Storage and BigQuery de-identify my data, delete, or open up into a Fire Viewer. This Fire Viewer is an interface to be able to see the data and interact with the data without directly invoking the backend API. We can see our resources are listed, and I'll be searching for the encounter resource. This is listing all of the encounters I have within my Firestore. If I click in, we can see there's an overview, elements, and JSON tab. The elements is a logical representation of the raw JSON object. We still have the ability to view it as a JSON object if your developers would prefer. Within elements, each of these is a dropdown. So for example, when looking at reason code, we can see there's a SNOMED code associated with this encounter. We also have the ability to check things like referential integrity, which is the ability to refer to another resource in the Firestore. This is currently telling me this practitioner was the owner or who saw the person within this encounter. We can click the practitioner and actually go view their data in the data set. So 
not only do we have a robust set of implementations within the Fire API, we also have a developer-friendly tools to better leverage the product. Fire has been getting a lot of buzz in the market today due to its promise in interoperability and U.S. legislation changes. One of the main benefits that we see in organizations that move towards a Fire-based data model is the ability to unlock real-time use cases. Google's Fire server is built on the same technology that Cloud Spanner is built on and run on. Thus, this allows for high transactions and throughput, both necessary things for AI and analytics use cases. One of the biggest considerations an organization should make when adopting a Fire-based standard is how well it scales. Ideally, a Fire server should be able to hold all an organization's data without a large loss in performance. That's one of the best things about managed products and Google Cloud's Fire API. It will automatically scale to meet your workload and your data storage needs. That way, an organization can use it for any number of use cases without having a need for data replication or bringing latency into their applications. To learn more, visit cloud.google.com forward slash healthcare. And to get started, you will need to have a Google Cloud project. If you do not have one, I have included a link to a trial account with free credits in this video's description, along with other helpful resources. And community, if you found this episode helpful, you can subscribe to the channel to get notifications of more healthcare episodes. Cheers.